Thank you, Dr. Gu. So the next speaker will be uh, me, and I would like to share with you the challenges and opportunities uh, of young radiologists in Taiwan. I'm Yi Chen Tsai, and I work uh, now in the Taichung Veteran General Hospital. It's located in the central part of Taiwan, and uh, this is Taiwan, and this is the whole Asian Oceania region. And this is an uh, icon uh, of the Tyro, which I would like to share with you in the following speech. Uh, first, I would like to share with you about the challenges first. And uh, as I told you before, the GDP and the health status are uh, plotted by gap, min um, gap minor. And you notice there are a huge gap between the United States and Taiwan, uh, considering the investment to the health condition. And uh, that's because uh, how Taiwan does it is because we are seeing more patients for less. So that's the real situation here. And this is my clinical schedule. And uh, you see that from Monday to Friday, these boxes with gray background are those times the hospital paying me serving as a doctor in the hospital. But actually the work the hospital is giving me is far beyond the box. You see a lot of uh, interpretation are done in the evening and even in the late night and in the uh, midnight, sometimes we are called to do some interventional angio. And also in the uh, Saturday, I also do some clinical work. And we spend less time with our family, with our own uh, interesting uh, TV drama and uh, with uh, some great food, but that's limited. And with this kind of busy schedule, we still have to find out some time to do the reading and to do the writing, to do the research. So this is a clinical situation, very busy in Taiwan. So current situation is that we have limited resources, including time, money, and manpower. We do the uh, interpretation all day, we do the intervention all day. This is the current situation. However, we wanted to have a goal. The goal is to increase the market share in the uh, international leading journals like AJR, Radiographics, Radiology, probably Academic Radiology, or European Radiology will be also. So there is a huge gap between, as you might recognize. So I read a lot of business uh, magazine and news magazine to find out uh, if I can find some strategy for that. And I noticed there is a small company which is called HTC. HTC is now the leading company in smartphone, the PDA phones. Uh, you might know that they are very uh, leading company in the Windows Mobile and the Android system. And actually, HTC started the company from 2006. They started to have the brand. And within four years, now it's become a leading company in the world. So I studied how HTC become so successful, and I noticed that they made a great SWOT analysis in the beginning, and they find their niche to penetrate into the market. So what is SWOT analysis? SWOT analysis is to analyze yourself, to define your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. So this kind of business model help you to understand yourself and how uh, you can go to your dream. So let's look at, this is a busy slide and probably the only busy slide I would like to share with you. This is a Taiwan radiologist, young radiologist SWOT analysis. You see the strengths. Asian doctors tend to work hard, and uh, you notice that from Dr. Gu already. And we have more patients, so we have more special cases. This is our strength. And weakness is that we have busy clinical work, we have no academic week and time, and uh, because of the fast clinical workflow, we have to improve our image quality, not to let it become a routine imaging, as pointed by Dr. Gu before. Then for opportunities, there are actually a lot of opportunities. Western radiologists, they read fewer cases, have fewer special cases. If your hospital is 10 times bigger than uh, the, the one in the United States, of course you see special cases more frequently. And Asian people, uh, because of the heavy, heavy clinical work, we have some creative innovation. In business model, they call it disruptive innovation from the heavy clinical workflow and to solve some clinical problems. And one of the uh, Best example is that uh, Dr. Gu used the CT for the congenital heart disease, which is usually uh, diagnosed by MR in Western country. Because we are so busy, we need a fast and accurate exam, so we decided to use CT. So this is our opportunity. For threats, if we have the same idea with the Western doctors, because they have more manpower, they have more money, they can get fast published. 
So the major point is never do the same topic with the Western doctors because you will lag behind them and you will always be the second one. You will always publish in the low impact factor journal or even no impact factor journal. So this kind of threat is very important. And education, in Asia, the uh, science, the scientific education, for example, medical school, is still teaching you to follow the authority. We seldom tell you to challenge the authority. And this is a big problem because if you want to do science, you have to challenge everything you believe and then to uh, try to prove that otherwise it's not true. So this is a threat. If you have a correct and clear SWOT analysis, then you can have a clear strategic map. From strengths, we know that we have to keep hard working, we have to read more cases. From weakness, we know that we have to keep good image quality and uh, protocol. And Dr. Gu's approach is to separate the routine and the special cases, and in my way, it's almost the same. And academic time is actually nights and weekends. No daytime in the weekdays is impossible. And for, from the opportunities, we have to quickly collect special cases faster than the Western group and use uh, your creativity to do the disruptive innovation. From threats, never do the Me Too study, never use similar concept. You have to uh, have a creative idea and a good study design creativity and uh, scientific language. So I would like to show you an example to illustrate how I uh, really implement this kind of thinking in my uh, academic life. And I will take a prosthetic heart valve on MDCT as a, a major example for this. I started to notice some special cases starting from 2005. Um, in this case, it has a prosthetic valve here and there's a gap here. So this is power of leakage, which is uh, quite unusual to be seen in CT. So at that time, I noticed that I can perform a fortune per view, a short axis, and even 3D reconstruction of the same defect, which had not been reported in the literature before. So I think this is a special case. I should start to focus on this part before the Western group. So I look at the Western literature, and they, they say that they use T as a gold standard for diagnosing the problem. But uh, Western people do IV sedative in the uh, United States, and there's usually no pain for the patient. But it's not true in Taiwan, because in Taiwan, re reimbursement is so low. So actually, most of people get the T without, with only local anesthesia. And the patient is usually very discomfortable, and uh, they usually refuse the procedure. So this is the real condition between the United States and Taiwan. The difference is big. So uh, we made a chart at that time, and uh, these are the four major tools for diagnosing the problem, and these are the modalities. And you notice that actually these modalities are not so good, and uh, uh, most of people will go to exploratory surgery to find the final diagnosis. So we think, should we have a non-invasive, comfortable, safe, and accurate